One of the most popular uses of a flag is to symbolize a nation or a country. Some national flags have inspired other nations or countries. For example, the oldest flag that is still in use, flag of Denmark, inspired some of the nations such as Norway, Sweden, Finland, Iceland that use the cross design on their flags. Another example for this fact is Union Jack of the UK. Many former colonies still carry it on their flags like Australia, New Zealand, Tuvalu, etc. Apart from national flags, one may encounter with war flags. A war flag is also known as bottle flag, military flag or standard which is a variant of national flag for use by military forces on land. Few countries such as Bolivia, Singapore or Brunei have proper war flags. Some countries like the US or Switzerland use standard national flag. The Philippines armed forces use the standard national flag but during times of war the flag is turned upside down. Same for Bulgaria's flag. If you turn it upside down, it turns into a war flag. And maritime flags. Flags are quite important at sea as well. A national flag flown at sea is called an ensign. A merchant ship or yacht carries its ensign with the flag of whatever nation it's visiting currently. Flying ensign alone in foreign waters, a foreign port or in the face of a foreign warship traditionally indicates a willingness to fight. There is a system of international maritime signal flags. International maritime signals are various flags to communicate with ships. Each flag has a specific meaning when flown alone. There are also international flags. As the term itself indicates, these flags do not belong to one single nation or represent one country. Flag of the United Nations, the Olympic flag are some examples of international flags. Flags are usually rectangular in shape such as many nation flags around the world, but they can be any size or any shape like square, the flag of Switzerland, swallowtail like the flag of Ohio, US or double pennant like the flag of Nepal. Flags can even have more different shapes like arc, abnormal pennant, burgee, curvy arc, curvy, fenian, mamluk, pennant, roven banner, swallowtail with thong. These are just some examples of different shapes, there may be even more. Although flags come in different shapes, we can still divide them into some main parts. The part nearest to the stuff is called as the hoist and the other part is called as the fly or end. As the most of the flags are rectangular, the length of fly generally exceeds hoist. The main portion of the flag, all or most of its area, is called as the field or ground. The pole to which the flag is attached to is mostly called flagpole, flagstaff or mast. Flags can have some certain designs. Some flags have a design element in the upper corner of the hoist. This part is called a scanton. Some flags have a triangle on one half of a flag, the half that is close to the pole. This shape is called a chevron. Some flags have a triangle formed by rather thick lines slicing the flag into upper and lower parts. That's pole. If the flag is divided into four pieces with a cross in the middle, it's called as quarterly. We may also see some flags that are sliced into two pieces diagonally. This is called as band. If you add another diagonal line and make it thick, you will get a cell tire. If the flag is divided into three pieces with vertical lines, it's called as pales. If the lines are horizontal, it's fesses. A type of cross used by mostly Scandinavian countries, Scandinavian cross, but if the cross has symmetry, it's called as symmetrical cross. If the cross do not reach to the end and poses only in the center, it's Greek cross. Some flags have thick lines across their edges, this is called as water.